Okay, this is part four of our playlist on uh, cross product definition and calculations. And in front of you are two general vectors, general three dimensional vectors, I should say. You can exp extend this to three dimensions or bring it back to two or even one. But in general, uh, the kind of vectors you're going to be seeing in this class look like this. There's x components, y components, and z components. And each one of those components is associated with the i, j, or k hat uh, unit vectors. So if we take these two general vectors and calculate the cross product using the determinant form, which we covered last video, so I'm going to calculate a cross b. I'm going to set up my, my matrix just like I did. I, J, K is my first row, and then A, X, A, Y, A, Z, B, X, B, Y, B, Z. That's a matrix. I'm going to take the determinant of it. Um, well, it's going to look something like this, and I'll go ahead and put my signs here just so I don't forget. And it's going to look something like this. And matter of fact, I'll go to a new page where I have much more room to write. So we'll come back and reference this if you need to. But all I've done is I've taken these two general vectors, vector A and B, and I've I've set them they're up their cross product as the determinant of this matrix that's in front of you. So let's go over here and actually calculate that. So if you remember how it's done. We have i, and this is a positive i, and that's going to be times a x. Nope. Sorry, a y times b z minus a z b y. And let's go back and see what I did. Let me switch colors on my pen here. All I've done is I started out with this factor out in front, and then I took the determinant of this smaller 2 by 2 matrix here. I did that just by taking the determinant, the way you take any determinant, the product of this diagonal, uh, I did not mean to do that, the product of this diagonal minus the product of this diagonal. Let me show you that again. This factor here, times the determinant of this 4x4 four four matrix that I've outlined in blue. The determinant of that matrix is just this diagonal product minus this diagonal product. So I have I times AY times BZ minus BY times AZ. Let's see if I've duplicated that correctly over here. And I have I times AY BZ minus AZ BY. And then to calculate the next uh, the next component. Uh, let me make this black again. I'm going to do the same thing. Remember this time I have a negative sign here. So I'm going to have J times, well let's go back and see what I have. J times, go back to, I'll do red this time. This times the product of this times this minus this times this. In case you didn't get that, I've got j hat times this times this minus this times this. So I'm going to go over here, change back to black, and it's going to be a x b z should be minus a z. Bx. And of course I'm way out of room here, so I'm going to come down to the next line. And the next one is going to be very much the same. It's going to be positive a k hat. Remember the sign comes from how we've assigned the signs up top here. So I've got going to have k hat times, let me get it to yet a different color. I'm going to have k hat times this term times this term minus this term times this term. In other words, I'm taking another diagonal. K hat times the product of this diagonal minus the product of this diagonal. So let's go see what that looks like. K times 
a x b y minus a y b x and hopefully you can start to see a pattern developing here now I'm going to do something a little subtle I'm going to distribute I'm going to distribute this negative sign so if I do that that's going to make this negative sign a plus this is going to be negative and this is going to be positive terrible job there again there we go that's close enough that's going to be positive well notice this whole term in parentheses here is not um, has nothing to do with the vector j hat this is just a magnitude so I'm free to use the principle of commutativity here in addition is commutative so I can change those directions so let me just get in here and erase some of this when I, I, I said change those directions I mean change the order so I'm just gonna put the positive first and what I'm gonna get is a z b x minus b uh, z do that again b z a x okay so this is the form that I this is sort of my default setting for the cross product and let me show you why there's an interesting mnemonic that sort of arises uh, and I like this because you don't have to keep track of any negative signs uh, or any of that foolishness that I don't like to keep track of so in other, in, other, in other words I'm saying that notice just in its general form each of these each of these terms has a positive in front of it and so uh, if you look here you have an I y z maybe I should draw this down here i j k which of course are associated with the directions x y z okay so here's where I, I think this is a useful mnemonic to remember how to do this if you remember recall that i is associated with the x direction what you actually have written here if you just look at uh, the uh, unit vector and then the subscripts on the components you have x y z let's look at the we'll skip this term for now we'll come back and we'll come look over here if you remember that j is associated with y you have in terms of components a y z x in other words what you're doing on these circles down here, wherever you start, you're just following the circle around. If you start with x, like I did here, it's the i term, I start with x and I follow the circle around counterclockwise to y and then z. Does that make sense? And over here, I started out with the y term, so I'm going to keep following it clockwise, y, z, x, like that, y, z, x. And the same is going to hold true here. If I remember that k is associated with the z direction, well, if I start with Z, then I should expect to find X and then Y next. And in fact, I do X and Y. So let me get rid of some of the stuff that I've cluttered up the screen with. So the, the first trick to this is just drawing these things in circles. And we've already done that with the IJ and K unit vectors. You've got to remember to do it, or at least remember what direction those are associated with. Sometimes it helps to actually draw the X, Y, and Z circle as well. But if you can sort of make that translation in your mind, this becomes pretty easy because actually what we're doing here is the very first term in each of these uh, parentheses if you put it together with the unit vector coefficient is just that simple order x y z and for the second term notice I'm just reversing the order of these two guys so I had y z here and now I have z y it works in the next case also you have x I'm sorry you have y z x is following the circle and then you take these and reverse the order z x same here you have z x y following the circle then you take these two and reverse the, the order y x uh, it seems a little clumsy at first but if you do this a few times um, I, I think it, it, it works out to be a pretty uh, pretty interesting way to remember just how to do the cross product without having to write down a matrix and take the determinant of course 
this came from that method, so you're always free to do that. But if you can, uh, in effect, this is what you end up with anyway. So if you can remember this form, you save yourself a step. If you can't remember it, you can always start with the, uh, the matrix, or you can use the brute force method. Each of those works every time. These are totally equivalent methods. This just seems to be a handy shortcut to me.